Well, Senator James Lankford of uh, Oklahoma is working with Tim Scott uh, on the Police Reform Task Force. Uh, Senator, what do you think is going to come out of the Senate on, on this bill? There will be several things that will come out. Basic transparency is always needed, uh, but that will come out of this police reform bill. So if a police officer uh, has uh, their employment records, uh, they move to another uh, place to be able to work, their employment records need to be able to move with them. If there's a use of force, uh, whether that be uh, for uh, severe bodily injury or someone dies in police custody, uh, that information needs to be collected uh, on a national level as well. About 40 percent of the departments already collect that and turn that into the FBI. We'd like for that to be turned in uh, nationwide. Uh, we want people to be able to see what's going on in different law enforcements, and quite frankly, uh, for the good police officers to be able to identify bad police officers that are in their midst, uh, that are distracting from the work that's happening there, and from the good reputation of people doing law enforcement all over the country. But there'll be, there'll be about 15 different proposals that will roll out tomorrow uh, in our total package. Uh, is there a police union that might uh, stand in the way of those reforms? Well, we're going to talk with the police unions. Uh, this has been a challenge that several police officers have actually identified to me to say that the, at times a person is actually fired or goes through a process of arbitration. Uh, at the end of that arbitration, they're put back on the force and the other officers that work with them are frustrated because they know that this person uh, doesn't have what it takes to be a good police officer on the street. And uh, so there's a couple of things that we're trying to be able to work through. One is we want to continue to be able to work with unions. The union lead, the individuals and all those kind of folks are not our problem. It's the system that they've created on this uh, where it pushes people back out onto the street that maybe they're not at that spot to be able to be. So we want to get more help to police officers because they deal with very difficult issues all day long. It's not unlikely for a police officer uh, to deal with uh, a domestic violence, uh, to be able to deal with a sexual assault, uh, to be able to deal with a, 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 a person that's actually trying to steal and be able to run away from them and then go work at a school uh, later on that day. There, there's a lot of emotion that's built up in that and we want to make sure that we're helping police officers in every way that we can, uh, but we're also bringing people alongside of them to say if there's someone in the middle of the group that's destroyed distracting from the good work that's happening with law enforcement. We need to help them find a different thing to be able to do. Oh, can Mitch McConnell and, and you all get this thing through the Senate and through the Congress by July the 4th? I think that's the deadline you're, you're setting for. So we're, we're trying to get this through as quickly as we can. Obviously, everything here needs bipartisan support. Uh, Democrats have already put out their proposal in the House. There are some areas of common ground there. Uh, for instance, there's an anti-lynching uh, section of it that we've worked on together for years. Uh, so there are several areas that we're going to find common ground on. Uh, the difficulty will be in some of the areas where we don't have common ground, and the hope is to be able to work those things out. We're all trying to get to a result uh, to be able to be able to help as much as we can across the country, support law enforcement, but to be able to deal with any issues that are out there and to be able to make sure we are de-escalating and that we are finding ways to be able to say there's a better way to serve and protect uh, that's not as violent. What do you think is causing all of this, um, uh, well, the civil discord and, and race relationship? Is it the police brutality or is there something uh, underlying all this that needs to be dealt with? Yeah, so we have a big challenge, obviously, in America dealing with race because we are actually dealing with race. Uh, what's interesting on this is a lot of countries around the world still don't deal with race. People are still very isolated and there is no desire. Uh, people stay separated. In the United States, we are not. Uh, we have 400 years of history stacked on top of each other with slavery, with Jim Crow laws, uh, with all different things that uh, deal with race for a very long time to suppress. And now we have worked for decades now to be able to unwind all of that and to be able to give opportunities. Uh, we have a lot of people that are very successful in our country that are African-Americans. Obviously, we've had an African-American president. We have African-American billionaires. We have successful leaders in media and sports and in business and in life and family. So there's lots of great examples and great resilience. Uh, but there's also individuals that are still pushing down African-Americans simply because of preference. Uh, so that's something we got to deal with. But that's not something you can vote on. Uh, that's families. And what I challenge families on is, has your family ever invited a family of another race into your home for a meal just to be able to come over for a meal like friends would and I'm amazed how many people would say I'm friendly with people of another race but I've never developed a friendship with someone from another race uh, there's never been anyone in your home for a meal uh, from another race and so it's a simple challenge the issue of race is a national issue but it really boils down to families and individuals if individuals 
aren't developing relationships with people of other race and developing real friendships, our nation is not developing those kind of friendships. And so I challenge families to be able to develop those relationships so our nation can work on this issue together. Well, Senator, we applaud your efforts. I appreciate it so much. And thanks for being with us on the 700 Club.